How you doing? <laughs> Never know where to look. Down here, where? Here? Yeah, okay. So it's here. I'll try. <laughs> I'll catch his eye. How are you? Welcome back or hello uh, to my channel. It's okay, you can breathe. Uh, the change happened by itself. It's kind of in Hebrew, English. Um, still working on it. Yet I was just about to start a live. And I was thinking that I didn't want to do more in English. But for some reason, I started typing in Hebrew. So, boop, 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 boop. Hey, you said English. <laughs> I need to practice my English again. Yes, it needs some oiling and fixing and uh, scrubbing and, you know, washing and stuff like that. So, what does a psychologist say after you tell him or her a story? Do you know? <laughs> I'm, I have about um, 32 years, actually, since I was about 10, that I started seeing them in all kinds of names, therapists. I started with psychologists when, when it was a shh, no one's supposed to know about it. Um, back then, you know, 80s, end of 80s, beginning of 90s. Um, today, if you don't have a therapist, it's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> but then it went on to all kind of an uh, art therapist. That's the first breakthrough that uh, we had when I was 12. I just saw a hand coming out of water. Beep! Alarm clocks, alarm clocks. <laughs> red alert, red alert. Um, everything jumped. And yes, it kind of saved my life, I guess. Um, I was very, very, very down back then. And I saw all kind of therapists. Uh, some end with therapists, and some end with just, uh, yeah, something therapist, like Tantra and uh, rebirthing and coaching and psychologists and therapists, psychotherapists and psychodrama and psych shrinks lately. You know, I started, you know, with my late um, breakthrough, breakdown. Sorry, I don't know. Books break down to break through. It's kind of like uh, one leads to the other. It always does. Um, and the thing is that I started with psychologists. Very, very fast I learned that they, most of them suck. Sorry. Um, I hope they got better. <laughs> Sorry. I hope they got better since I stopped seeing them. <laughs> Because the last ones I've seen shouldn't have even been in, uh, in the university. Like, go away. But yeah, you know, like every profession, we have many that uh, suck at their profession. Uh, they really do a very, very bad job. That's why I heard as a, an employee, I've heard from so many um, employers that said to me, it's so hard to find good workers. Why won't you stay? <laughs> because I just, you know, run into some other thing. Hey, CPTSD, now I have the excuse. But back then, I didn't know why I have to run and jump and move jobs every now and then. Um, but yeah, change is part of my life. And it's part of me having CPTSD. It's part of me being Uriel, I guess, because as soon as I was a fetus in my stomach, in my mother's womb, uh, they decided to find another place to stay. So changes had been ever since I was born. So I don't know if it's only CPTSD, but my CPTSD helps me focus on change because if I don't, uh, no fun. I've pretty much learned or practiced or whatever you want to call it, loving change. Because once I've learned to love change and to accept change as it is when it happens in, in all sorts of situations and with people or whatever, uh, it's easier for me. It's easier for me to re remind myself, oh, change happened. Oh, this and this happened. Oh, this and this and blah, blah, blah. And then, and then it calms me down. Oh, helps me calm down. But that doesn't come to the question, what does a psychologist say after you tell him a story? That does it. So, do you know? I've met a few, but do you know? 
it's kind of like a routine. And it usually goes like this. Um, how does that make you feel? <laughs> or at least in the series. Um, actually, maybe no. I met a few that sounded pretty much like that. Um, the thing is that at the basic, Freud and Jung and all those best friends of mine, um, they did a good job back then. End of the 19th century, beginning of 20th century. Nobody knew anything about the subconscious. They did an amazing thing, and that was what worked. Um, people evolve. <laughs> when we hear the same question, we begin to become sort of like, mm -hmm. hate it. Ask anything about yourself. If I tell you anything, even if it's okay, you can breathe. It's okay, you can breathe. If I keep repeating it, you'll, you, won't, you won't listen to me. I put it here, just a reminder, but I won't say it to you again and again and again because it's annoying. Anything that we've been told again and again and again is annoying. So it's true what they're doing is very correct because at the basic of all of our traumas, all of our issues, all of our triggers and bad belief, you know, the belief that we don't need anymore, they used to be good, they saved us, now they're not very needed, so we want to throw them away. And the basic of all this is emotional work. <laughs> I say it like this because for me it was hell to go through. It's not easy. I was pretty much detached I was until I was 24 from my own emotions, or at least I thought I was. I was completely, I didn't see them. And even though I practice them all the time, I listen to music and I go and I see movies and uh, and, and, and my daily life, I just pay attention. What do I feel? How do I feel now? How do I feel here? How do I feel this? Da, da, da. And only to just to get to know myself and to get to know the emotions. Because the basic of them, that's it. Now, I'll, I'll give you an example why it's so important to just know your emotions. Why it's so important to work with them. I was just thinking about now, just now. First of all, every life for me is a challenge still. Uh, it used to be a much harder challenge. Now it's a smaller challenge, but yet still a challenge. And a challenge means that my body starts to <laughs> shake inside, sometimes outside if it's too much, if it's more than I can handle. Uh, sweating. <laughs> physically and metaphorically. Um, and the thing is that when I look at it at, from the side, and that was that was what gives me the strength to do this is my emotional work because I can detach myself and say, hey, it's fear. Yeah, I'm scared of what you might say, if I won't know what to say, if I will just blah, 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 and you won't like me, you know, whatever. If I talk gibberish for you and whatever, okay, you're scared. You're frustrated because you don't know how to explain yourself. Okay. You're confused because you don't know what to do. Great. Emotions. That's it. I used to be scared of all those three. <laughs> um, I can tell you that fear had been my main focus for 21 years. I literally remember stopping the research, <laughs> shutting down the research in some uh, walk, some short trek in the Alps in Italy, in one of the farms I was when I was uh, 34, 33, whatever. Yes, I remember 33 because I was, I remember thinking 21 years of research, finished enough with this. Yes, I explored fear because it was the basic element of my life. I was scared literally to death. Back then when I was 12 and 13, I literally said, I'm not going to end my seventh grade or I'm not going to see path 13 or something like that. And yeah, the alarm clocks jumped and everyone, you know, they moved me in out of school and gave me this therapies and did this and did that. And, the, and they saved my life. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Just a second. Sorry, another thing when you might see PTSD with my mind is it's very hard for to keep the focus. Apologies ahead of time. I always apologize. Sorry. 
The thing is with emotions, the basic fear. I used to hate them. I used to be scared of them. I used to be, <laughs> literally, I blocked them until I was 24. I went through Vipassana. I went through uh, all kind of, uh, what else did I do until I, until I was 24? When I was, when I was, in tw when I was 24, I went through rebirthing. And after one month, I did another one week workshop, which, called, which was called Heart Matters. And back there, somewhere in the middle, um, I had this uh, epiphany, a shock moment. Actually, it wasn't really epiphany. Just like, what? I literally said how I can't feel while crying. And that shocked my mind. And I said, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So this is it. Emotions are not bad. <laughs> Emotions are energy in motion. It's not mine. Someone else said it. Maybe Neil Donald Walsh. Maybe someone else. I'm not sure. Um, but the thing is, emotions as is, is the best thing you'll ever have. What? Don't you want to be happy? <laughs> in love or a, um, calm and serenity and uh, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> you want those, right? Great. Now, the thing is, is this. If you want to feel um, love, like, you know, big romantic love that your heart is doo -doo, doo -doo, like this, you know, heart on a 10 level, or maybe eight or nine, well, you're going to have to live through eight or nine or 10 of fear, anger, jealousy, uh, confusion, frustration guilt and so on and so on and so on those are the ones that i keep dealing with in my life uh, uh, sadness big one and the thing is that most of us don't want those do we <laughs> we want to be happy all the time it doesn't work we know that right so if we want to be happy at a certain level you will we have to accept the other ones that bad ones at the same level. It's not, uh, we can't choose <laughs> this yes, this no. Life brings, and if when we accept, and that's exactly what I found after 21 years of research in fear and along with the rest, but fear was literally my major, major, um, <laughs> how do you call it? The major thing, the major aspect of everything. Today, lately, was pain. The past three years was pain. Um, but after researching fear and checking it and feeling it, literally feeling it for many, many times and many, many, in many, many areas, in many, many situations, with different people in different countries, in, in workshops, in jobs, in the relationships, on my own, <laughs> on, in the nature, whatever. Um, I can tell you that uh, the fear of bees and fear of dogs had literally decreased from 11 or 12 to almost none. I do feel the fear. I can handle it. Most of the time, I can literally handle it if I'm really in a bad shape, less. Like in the past uh, three years. Well, no, no, the first two and a half years. No, much better. Um, but the thing is that I decrease the fear by literally feeling it and letting my mind feeling it again and meeting it. Kind of like, oh, it's fear. 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 Oh, that's it. <laughs> oh, it's fear. Oh, it's fear. Oh, it's fear. At some point, my mind was like, yeah, okay, gone. Let's do something else. <laughs> and it's the same thing with anything, in any area. You can do it in any area. I checked it with finding uh, relationships and jobs and uh, places to stay, like the most, the first uh, three basic things for me and most people, I think. You know, so we have a place to stay, we have money to have income, to food, and to do what we want. And of course, to have a relationship, to feel love, to love, and to love others, and to relate, and to do all those things. Um, the thing is that each one of those, for me, was very scary, incredibly scary. 
Um, and each one of those I just literally took as an aspect, as, a, as a something to focus on. And I made a step, and another step, and another step, baby steps, literally baby steps. And if, you know, I'm talking about things that I've been told for many years before me. And the thing is that I only got a deal of baby steps with my emotions. Now, you can do, go and do uh, therapy with anyone, and it's very, very much recommended by me. I'm still in therapy. Um, now, uh, three and a half years with psychotherapists from Athens. <laughs> uh, yeah, it works even in Zoom and Skype. If it works, it works. And the thing is that what I did majorly with everything I do and what you can do even in therapy, in a workshop or by your own, by yourself, with music, movies, books, whatever triggers your emotions. You just invite your emotion for a coffee. Just say, hey, um, fear. Oh, okay, come, sit down. Two sugars? <laughs> it's exactly what I'm doing for 30 years. Sorry, I actually literally need to focus in my mind because... I started therapy when I was around 10, and I started doing my work with changes when I was 12. And that's re literally what um, brought the change. Therapy helps with some of them. <laughs> Most of them, not happy. Not happy at all. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Yeah, it's not mine. It's maybe the good fathers. Um... Yet the thing is that what I did with myself, and that's exactly what I'm talking about, uh, through jokes maybe, through fun maybe, because I don't know how to explain it very good. I'm not that good at it, sorry. but um, Yet I do know it works. <laughs> I, I know it works. If you do all kind of inner work, get to know yourself. Just That's it. Get to know yourself. Admit that yourself exists. It's not like Erdmeet. No. Get to know yourself. It brought me out of uh, depression, anxiety. It brings me out of every time, out of uh, extreme emotional um, explosions, you can call it, of huge waves. And I use breathing as a, as a basic. And I literally taught myself to do that uh, in order to fall back asleep. Because my mind goes, and I do take oil, yet it doesn't work. <laughs> it doesn't always help. Yet I notice breathing lately, I literally do it as an exercise, not just as a, oh, yeah, it's fun. Literally, oh, yeah, breathe. I take a few breathing and poof, wake up. <laughs> it's like, fun, wow, it works. So breathing amazingly helps with emotions. Amazingly. It just brings you out of this part that is scared of whatever you're going through, of whatever emotion you are literally going through. Imagine emotion as some kind of a, a stream or a wave of water. That's what, you know, Chinese call water emotions in every primer therapy. Um, so imagine when you have an emotion like, like this and you can't stand it any longer. I get it. Trust me, I get it. Um, I have it every, literally, every day. So when you have it and you, it just like explodes on you, the only thing that you have that has a problem with it, the only part in you that has a problem with the emotion that goes through you is your mind. I point here because what, you know, it's your thoughts. It's what you think about that situation. It's what you think about that emotion, if you know what that emotion is. I notice that the moment, the moment I focus with my mind and say, oh, that's fear. Oh, that's anger. Oh, that's sadness. Oh, da 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 My mind, oh, okay. And I literally now read a book about how to talk to my daughter, you know, how to talk to kids and make and so they listen, how to li listen to them so they talk. If you don't know about this book, read it. I started it all talks about giving, um, first of all, respect, but not the respect. It's to give the, uh, I forget the word, the acceptance or whatever the word, I don't know the word, for the emotion. 
It's like, oh, you feel uh, frustrated. Oh, you feel angry. And I just did that with my daughter just now after she is having a, a beautiful holiday with their mom. We separated. And they went to her family and they had a lot of fun, a lot of cousins, and blah, 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 blah. So almost a five years old uh, is having a hard time going back to kindergarten. Yeah, kind of obvious. And it doesn't help that it also moves from mommy to daddy. Oops. <laughs> so I just read this this morning about this just acceptance. They're like, oh, yeah, I know that. Okay, let's do that. So I said, I said outside, like, yeah, okay, I understand. It's, yeah, yeah it's hard. Yeah, it's frustrating, right? To go back from all those fun and all this uh, attention you get from everyone to a place where you have to do all those things. Yeah, and I don't want to. Blah, blah. And it wasn't that easy for her to stay, but it wasn't that hard. And literally, if I would have taken a couple more minutes, if I felt I literally had very small, small, short time, it was five, ten minutes barely, I read another story and, you know, goodbye in the window and blah, blah, blah. Um, the thing is that the first thing I did and the first thing I do ever since she was born is to accept her emotions. And I can tell you as a baby, and I think I told that already, but me accepting her fear of not knowing what's going on stopped her from looking for her mom on her first night ever without her mom. No. And she stopped looking for her. She accepted that this is new and it's weird and it's scary. And it's okay to be scared. It was amazing. And it's not that I'm saying, like, oh, she's a special baby. She is an amazing kid. And she's very special to me and maybe some others. It doesn't matter. The idea is that when you just accept your emotions or your kids' emotions or whoever emotions, just say, okay, I see that you're angry. Oh, I see that. Or if you don't want to say, oh, you're angry, I, I know that you're angry because sometimes like, it seems like you're very angry about what happened or very frustrated or very sad or very whatever. And when we give this acceptance to our emotions, our mind shuts down. Not shuts down, it keeps working. But the, the, the fear, the stress, the anxiety of whatever the emotion you thought is happening, is, is coming, evaporates, literally. And suddenly you can go and do your shopping. And suddenly you can go meet your friends. And suddenly you can get out of your house. And trust me, I'm a living example. It's not like, you know what? Don't trust me. Check it. <laughs> I hate that expression. I, I don't know where it comes from. Don't trust me. Don't ever trust what I'm saying. I actually said it in my last live in Hebrew. Do you trust me? Don't. This is it's kind of an old expression that's... Thank you very much for paying attention. The thing is that when we let our emotions be, our mind stops fighting and we enjoy life more. <laughs> so psychologists are correct about asking, so how does it make you feel? Yes, they are correct. Uh, timing <laughs> would be good. Timing. I would say, wait <laughs> with that question. Wait, connect. <laughs> say, hello, my name is, hi, how are you doing? I've been there. Connect. Then, so how does that make you feel? <laughs> so make, change the variety. Psychologists, people, please, if you work with people, change the variety when you talk to people. I don't talk to people because I don't have the patience to be a therapist. I literally don't. I developed uh, four uh, exercises for myself. I gave them a, f a few sessions on my own, private sessions. But uh, as a therapist, I just don't have the patience. I'm uh, one of those that, let's go there. <laughs> and therapist needs patience and to talk to people and get the, and it, the process needs patience. I know. I <laughs> completely accept that. More than accept. It's a, it's a it's a huge process. It's a long process. So take it easy. Um, the thing is that it was very hard for me to trust until today. Uh, as, but as a kid, 
to find the therapies that would help, that would uh, actually do something. So that is why I developed for myself this method for myself, which includes these little changes, uh, inviting your emotions for coffee, curiosity, ask questions, guys, <laughs> and breathing, basics. And, you know, it's basics. You do all those. You have the strength to do anything, literally anything in your life. Anything. Heal any trauma. And I'm living with a constant CPT, like CPTSD, which is constant stress, post-trauma stress disorder. Rah, I hate those words. Um, it's too long to, to remember. <laughs> um, yes, I'm having the memory loss and memory issues and I'm having sleep issues and I have you know, finally have finally after 30 years of hand, dealing with it I have my own handicap uh, diploma it's not that helpful it's helpful because it helps me with a little bit of money and here and there with all kind of people that help um, but yeah anyway I'm dealing with with an issue Let's say I'm not uh, comparing sizes, guys. If you're dealing with other issues, I'm completely taking my head off. If you have more than one kid, I'm literally kissing your feet because I have no idea how you do it. <laughs> how you do it? Um, so I can tell you that it's not that easy living with CPTSD. It leaves you exhausted. It leaves you with the a nerve system which always on the run, always on adrenaline, always with every tiny little noise ahead outside, which is out of the normal. I have to work with my mind and remind it that it's fine, that it's this, and that it will it's okay, and it will move, and it will change. I have to do this again and again and again and again. And yeah, it became easier course because I became better at it and my mind became um, much more adjustable to it because it knows it's fine you know changes happened I went through hell many times and change happened suddenly poof everything changed and all I had to do was and all I am doing actually is share my experience of what I'm looking at change for the past 30 years it's funny, a couple of months ago, my daughter, she's almost five, and she said, you know what, Dad, you know what I like in life is to check things and explore them. <laughs> or look at her like, you'll be fine. <laughs> um, it's all you need. It's an amazing thing. It's just to keep take something and explore it. And once you do, your mind sees it and accepts whatever it is, and he stops worrying about it. And suddenly the emotions which are stuck with ever whatever trauma are kind of coming out. And yeah, it's not a fun process. It's easier with time. It's not always fun. Yes, I agree. Yet, it's just like... If you go to a new house... Yes, you probably heard that metaphor, but I'll say it anyway. If you go to a new house... Or if you go to a new garden, you have to work a bit in order to make the place livable or the garden, you know, the place where you want to plant all the things, plantable, whatever. <laughs> when you open even, if you even go even further, if you go into a room which hadn't been open for many, many years, have you ever walked into one? Like a shelter? I live in Israel. Guys, shelters, it's kind of like part of my life. And yes, when you go, it's, you don't live there. So it's once in a while you go there. And every time it's, whew, it's always not that fun. And if you go and shelters are actually uh, being aired. <laughs> so they are not that stinky. And yet they always have some kind of a smell. And if you go to a room where I haven't been open for a very long time, windows and everything at, you know, at all, then it stinks as, uh, as hell. Like, whew, you don't go there. What do you do first thing? You open all the windows, all the doors, to let the air in, right? 
That's exactly, but exactly what happens every time you meet a new situation or every time you explore a new area that you want to explore. Every time you want to improve at anything, whatever you want to improve, you will have to meet some kind of emotions, like me in, the, in the, these lives. I'm practicing talking uh, freely, kind of without thinking, and just let all my knowledge just come out, and not come out, and actually wherever the knowledge comes from. Some I know, some I've reached, some it just connects while I'm talking. Um, and the thing is that I'm practicing doing this in order for me to do it better. And I'm practicing, and it's pretty much one of the only practices I ever made in front of people, because until now, I was very, very, let's say, not very, <laughs> not with much self-esteem at this. At this, I'm meeting you. And just like today, this morning, I said to myself, but oh yeah, <laughs> it's cool. You don't have to meet anyone. You're just speaking to the computer. Who cares? And then my mind like, oh, okay. <laughs> you should have heard it. Oh, okay. That's fine. It helps. And yes, I know this is being recorded. Yes, I know that this can be seen by millions, not just one or two or a group of people. So I'm doing my best, <laughs> you know. But... The idea for me right now is that I love to talk about what I found, about what I find, about what, what I research, about what I explore. I love to do this. Don't know how to tell you why. Uh, yes, I love the attention. Maybe it's because I didn't get it as a kid. Who cares? <laughs> if it makes me feel good, if it makes me feel um that it's the right thing to do right now without pushing myself i don't push myself or at least i try to um the thing is that i look at if it feels right for me if it feels connected if it feels that it will cause me good if it won't like if you look at the lives in the past you could see that the the, the time between them would be months and now it's uh, 10 days. It's not always. And yet, the more I do it, the easier it comes. The easier it comes for me, the, fr the more, the freer I am to check with myself if it's fear and anxiety or something I have to share or if it's just like, yeah, I feel like talking right now. Let's talk. No? Okay. Let's go on with my day. The other idea was to go to sleep. And I was like, yeah, but I feel like talking. Let's talk. Most chances, these lies would never be seen. <laughs> Maybe a few of that will explore in the past. But who cares? <laughs> for me, or who mind? <laughs> because for me, my mind literally now accepts that here another life is happening. And here, the sky is still up there. The ground is still here, and I'm, yeah, my nose is a bit shot because I'm a bit cold, but I'm breathing, <laughs> I'm fine, and yeah, the day can go up and down, who knows, yeah, okay, but the life got nothing to do with it, so I can talk, it feels better for me, I don't, I want to share what I explored, I've explored 30 years of changes, uh, for me, it was a life-changing experiment, I would love to share people because I see other people, you know, looking for ways. So here, take my way. Not as the way. Don't. Don't. I'm not kidding. I don't have a way. The way is yours. You have four exercises that build on four abilities that are already yours. The ability to change your t-shirt or change the way you steer your coffee. The ability to feel this or that emotion to whatever extent you can right now the ability to ask questions duh and breathing <laughs> come on <laughs> so all you have have to or have to it's, it's not even you don't have to do anything just accept that you have 
so much strength I don't accept listen <laughs> I don't even have to say it I found that for myself that as all humans if we can do one plus one some of us you know our minds a bit it's okay some things ha some things happen they can do other things far better than us but we can do one in one so we can do those exercises and literally change the way we see ourselves I used to hate myself, I used to be scared of myself, I used to not know who, who I am. I explore myself to the letter, I, and I still do. And just like about six months ago when someone told me, you should get to know yourself, uh, people who don't get to know themselves go into depression. And I, I started laughing, I said, I said to her, maybe that explains why I'm laughing so much. I'm doing it for 30 years now. <laughs> it's Myself is my safe zone. Myself is the place I'm going to. Myself is the way, is the place I'm going for answers. Myself is, people call me confident and uh, how uh, brave I am for doing this and this. Um, no, guys. I just met myself in so many situations that my mind remembers and remembers that everything was fine and I can do this and this and I can explore a bit more. Every time, of course. And every time I explore a bit more. And what more? And I just slowly, slowly, my island, myself, myself as an island, become, became more than my mind. And that's why I pretty much, I guess, this is, the, it, this is okay, because my mind understood that it's perfectly fine to just breathe. And nothing else. That's, that's it. And if I don't know what to tell you guys, well, <laughs> what can I do? I know that you can do whatever you want. I know that you can literally live the life that you now dream of. Not tomorrow, maybe not next month. It might take you a few years to get there. Yet, you can get there. I did that in so many areas, in so many realms, in so many situations. Either with fears and with dreams. It, all I did was be here, be there, be here, be there. And you can do that. You can go through anything. If you go through hell right now, and trust me, if I would ever go to hell, Satan knows exactly how I drink. Because I'm there every other week. It, yeah, sometimes I'm there for months, and then you know he knows exactly how I like it. And sometimes I visit <laughs> because what can I do? It is broken. I have to find a way to live with that, you know, this broken part. So I found a way through myself. And you can do that too. You're human. <laughs> you are not special. And if you go through hell, get to know yourself. It's the best of times. Because once you get to know yourself in hell, then, then your mind will, like, will, will fly once you get out. Because you remember that you huh, actually went through hell. That's exactly how you're going to feel after you go through hell consciously. So, celebrate it. Anyway, your emotions at the basic are at the basic. It's pretty much how you feel yourself in many different ways. Get to know them. If I can ever say or recommend anything, get to know your emotions. Invite them for a coffee or tea or milkshake or some kind of uh, health shake or whatever you want. It's not even coffee. <laughs> it's a, I call it a funny coffee. It's one of those non-caffeine coffees, which is good. I'll drink it for years because one of the things I've changed from caffeine that I barely drink coffee right now. I drink sometimes just to change my taste. My taste buds need changing, like this morning. But it's once every couple of weeks, <laughs> if at ever, at all. I mean, you can change anything. Either it's habit, either it's just a pattern, either it's a belief, 
idea is the way you look at yourself. You can change literally anything you want. And like I just started explaining to my daughter about uh, illusions, but uh, I started telling her that yes, the hill is there, yet it's our belief if it's hard or easy to climb it. And I found many, many times that once I found what troubles me, what makes me believe that it's hard, I just became aware of it and poof, and it became easy. Because I don't want to become hard, right? I don't want it. <laughs> so my mind's like, eh, I don't want it. It throws away. It's fun. Just become aware of yourself, of your emotions, of changes. Yeah, okay. I had enough of talking. <laughs> <sighs> and if you can add humor to it, most recommended. Most recommended. <laughs> yeah, it's it's hard. I, I know, I know, I know. Sometimes it can it can be humor. Are you kidding? Don't. If it's feel forced, don't. Do whatever works for you at that moment. I can go through depression like this. I can go like this. It depends on the moment. Um, yes. Get to know yourself, yourself guys. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> like, literally, guys. I don't know you. I, I know that yourself is freaking amazing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Get to know yourself. You'll realize that you can do far, far, far more than you can even begin to imagine. And it's not a joke. It's not a headline. It's not a bumper sticker. It's true. Get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Who are you? What do you want? Have a good life. And see you whenever I see you. Ciao, amigos. Bye-bye. And...